yeah. speaking of when like you know you just you know you want to just cook food yeah so you were born and raised in kentucky yeah uh, you're a proclaimed numbers guy um <laughs> so you went to university of kentucky for accounting yeah but then somewhere along the lines you went straight to san francisco and worked at started working at rupercon yeah and then at 25 you worked at the rustic bistro in aspen which yeah. got you the um esquire's best new restaurant that's super sad then you work for mark miller at the coyote cafe in santa fe then on to martha's vineyard in massachusetts where you won best new chefs and best new chef in new england and then you funded founded the second slow food chapter in new england which was super cool i'm yeah. a huge fan of slow food it yeah. should be that way <laughs> and then by the end of that year you were back in aspen at little um little now little now yeah and you started the rendezvous farm which is yeah. extra cool in my opinion i don't know how you did that in that <laughs> cold but you did it, italian charcuterie yeah. uh, produce yeah. and so much more yeah uh, in an area that wasn't getting that at all and then um you took your talents to new york city yeah charlie bird pasquale jones legacy ada's you know the rest is history yeah in those 20 years you've done a lot yeah you know like you've accomplished <laughs> and I feel like you've started like thanks man i'm trying to figure out how'd yeah. you get there how'd you get to like what made you change from accounting you know, to, to food how'd you get to be honest i i, I grew up in kentucky I, um uh you know definitely a blue collar family my father wasn't was in marketing and had a really good job and and um uh, with a with a great kind of fast food company my mother was also in marketing and, and did PR work early in my life, and then she um, kind of stopped to, to be our mom for a, a number of years, and then she went back and, and went into government work, actually, in really? politics. And okay. it, it, she influenced me greatly in terms of um, my love of politics and my, my love of, of uh, understanding government and those kind of things. And so she, she, she educated as well. And, you know, and so, so I got it on both sides, and both of them really loved food. And um, when I was raised, we had a, a you know, a ton of chores to do that was just kind of you know my father was a military guy um, oh, wow. uh, for, for forever until until I don't know probably the mid 70s when he came back from he was in Vietnam for a long time and um, and so we were raised with with discipline um, that you had some serious chores to do and you had to get those done like there was there were no no ifs ands or buts <laughs> about it like, and so one of them was this garden and um, yeah. and so there was always that I looked forward to it every year. I looked forward to tending to the garden. I looked forward to, to, it seemed huge to me at the time. Nice. Um, it was probably the size of this room, maybe twice, the three times the size of this room, which was actually a lot when you think about, you know, you're a kid and you got to weed, you know, rows and rows of these kind of things. But but we always had fresh produce to put on the table. And when I look back on it now, it's because we didn't have a lot. We were five kids. Um, uh, we, you know, it, it was less expensive to raise food than it was to go buy food. Exactly. And quite honestly, back then, the food in the grocery stores was pretty bad, you know, I mean, to Tomatoes were all terrible. You can only imagine. You could choose lettuce and, you know. We're just now getting to a point where food is like the way it should be. For sure. imagine. Yeah. (laughs) Still, we got a long way to go. Exactly. So this is, you know, prior to everything being organic and whatnot. So it's, um, it it was, it was, it left an indelible, you know, um, um, print on me. And, and so that's how I started. And, 